Hi there, and welcome to Is it a good idea to microwave this? The behind the scenes special. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Now, for the last half year or so, you've fallen in love with our quaint little internet show that airs twice a week. And I'm here in beautiful, sunny California to show you a little bit of behind the scenes of how we make the show and where it all started, and some never before seen footage. There's no reason why it would ever have to microwave this. This is the appliance section here, Johnny's left open corner. You see the tower of microwaves. The map! They do nothing! Uh, you're not going to believe this. You know, right here in the land of opportunity, Hollywood. Why? Well, the microwave is starting to get a little bit stinky. Is it a good idea to microwave this? The Behind the Scenes Special. I'm here now at Universal Studios Hollywood to take you behind the scenes of the microwave show and answer some of your most frequently asked questions. We'll start off with a question that's not that frequently asked, but deserves answering nonetheless. What's the history behind the show? Well, it all started back on May 2nd, 2007, when me and Jory found our first microwave. At the end of the school year, everyone started to move out of our dorm, leaving behind all of the stuff they couldn't bring with them. Scavenging all the items I found in the hallways, I opened up my very own leftover emporium. And over here, my appliance section. Come, follow me. Look, microwaves for sale, low price, $5 each. Over my right here, the chef made. Then, here's the Proctor Silex, the Sanyo, the Panasonic. We have it all, each microwave. Go on, low price, $5! Since there was no way I'd be able to sell all the microwaves we found, Jory decided to have some fun with one of them. So we converted an empty dorm room into the laboratory, grabbed a spare microwave, and the show was born. We have acquired uh, six microwaves from around the little building, people moving out, and we've decided to test them, see what they can really do. We found out that if you stick a light bulb in the microwave and you have it on high, it will glow uh, a rainbow of colors, a plethora amount that's a word i'm standing in front of the hollywood reservoir right now to answer your next question where do you get your microwaves well the very first microwave we got came from the leftover emporium as you just saw but for seasons two three and four we've uh taken to craigslist to uh search for microwaves that are very cheap and and uh pretty much already used and when jory gets through with them obviously they're significantly used now a lot of people have asked me, well, where do you film your show? Is it like a special room? No, we actually film our show outside. You know, not very dissimilar to the fountain behind me, but we actually film it in my backyard. Here's some before and after photos of what my backyard looks like, you know, on a regular day, and then when we set it up to be the Jory Karen Microwave Laboratory number two. I'm in front of the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios right now, and one of the questions I get a lot is, when do you guys film? Well, we don't film twice a week, that's for sure. What we usually do is we film an entire season in one evening, and then what I'll do is I'll edit them twice a week, so it looks like Jory's in there every Monday and every Friday, getting the black one. Wow, that looks like a lot of fun. Let's go give it a try, shall we? Welcome to Jurassic Park. All right, we're on board the Jurassic Park ride right now. There's four people! Yeah, no! ah! So one of the questions I get a lot is, is the show scripted? With the exception of the Dynamite episode, where we had to plan everything out because of the nature of the experiment, we couldn't do it a second time. Every now and then, me and Jory will uh, script out the introduction segments in case we screw up a line. But mostly, all the stuff you hear on the show is stuff we come up with off the cuff for the spur of the moment. We're just that naturally funny almost all the time. Excuse me for a minute. So what I was saying is, every now and then we'll have to script things for the introduction, but for the most part, the show is pretty much uh, on the seat of our pants the whole time. I'm standing next to my favorite Apollo 13 astronauts, Bill Paxton, Tom Hanks, and Kevin Bacon. To answer your next question, are you Jory Karen? Well, obviously I'm not Jory Karen, but I am the guy that controls the YouTube account, posts the videos, edits them, and answers all your comments. Do you make money off of this? Yes, we do. Now, I'm standing right here in front of the Hollywood sign because it's a golden place for opportunity. And the internet is my golden place for opportunity because over at Flix55.com, each and every one of our videos, we get a chance to win some money. And thanks to you guys, thanks to your support, we've won some money for the show. And that's kind of keeping us afloat, helping our budget so we can buy new and pow more powerful microwaves. And your support is what uh, pays for our budget, pretty much. So thanks. I'm here now at Dodger Stadium to answer your next question. What's with the roast and nuts gag? Well, it was something Jory came up with off the, off the seat of his pants way back in Episode 9, the toothpaste experiment. We have a tinfoil shield to protect our nuts. 
Nobody likes roasted nuts. <laughs> and ever since then, it's just been, always been a really favorite of our fans. We've decided to keep it in. Some people hate it, some people love it. Well, it's not going anywhere soon, so get used to it. Hey, can I get some roasted nuts? And what do you edit your videos on? Well, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. I edit all my videos on a state-of-the-art, high-end computer. A PC. Using that PC, I edit all my videos using Adobe Premiere Pro CS3. Cutting together the different video angles, sweetening audio levels, and creating custom titles for each episode. Of the two cameras we use, the first is my Canon Euler 100. It gets us the close-up angle of what's inside the microwave. Our second camera is a borrowed Panasonic DVX-100B. Handheld by me the entire show, it serves as our primary angle of Jory Karen and all of his reactions. It also records all the incoming audio from our various microphones. Between both cameras, on average, we record about 25 minutes of footage per episode, which gets edited down to the 4 or 5 minutes you see here on the internet. Here's some never-before-seen footage from Season 1, where Jory attempts to microwave a foam block and some styrofoam packing peanuts. Here at Jory Karen's laboratory, we microwave so you don't have to. Let's do this foam block. <laughs> Let's do it. Rapid fire style. Boy, that sucked. Now, continuing with rapid fire, let's do packing peanuts. How many handfuls of packing peanuts should we do? Two. Two? Sounds like a plan. That's three. Two. Oh well, it has two minutes on it, so uh, keep taping, I guess. Packing peanuts, dude. <laughs> One of the most frequently asked questions we get here on the show is, can you guys microwave a fill in the blank? I'm in front of the Warner Brothers water tower right now to answer that question, which is, chances are we already have microwaved your suggestion. Check through the other seasons to make sure we haven't, and if we haven't actually done it yet, send me a private message or comment or email, and we'll get around to it next time we film. Thanks for watching a behind the scenes special. I guess it's time I get back to my boring old life here in Hollywood, California. With Jory Karen and the rest of the cast and crew, is it a good idea to microwave this? I'm Jonathan Pollock. Good night. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs>